Um, another thing that's important is to know is that it has long been standard practice and remains so in this country and other places to lie to energetic <coughs> people and their families about their conditions, about some of the physical details of their conditions. And um, whatever story is told to the person and to their parents is going to get filtered also through their own knowledge, through their own confusion or understanding. Um, it may be that the doctors tell something not quite true to the parents who don't understand and retranslate that and tell it to the person as they grow or tell some version of it to the person as they grow, and then they're going to put that into their own context. Um, and so, you know, this stuff's confusing and it's hard and it's tricky. As I said, even most doctors don't understand it. So if an asylee is even aware that she has an intersex condition, it's highly likely that her story is going to be filtered through many layers of lies, misstatements, and confusion that are not it, not her lies, right? Um, she may be telling the story that she knows, or he may be telling the story that he knows, and it may not be a story that is possible or true. Um, so what we did in that case, we got uh, this client to an endocrinologist who specializes in intersex conditions, and the endocrinologist confirmed that he was intersex and he had undergone the feminizing genital surgery, um, in spite of the fact that the general practitioner couldn't see those signs. Um, and we were able to get the asylum claim approved. Um, so the take home points from that case are, first of all, there are people who will say they have an intersex condition when they do not. Um, there are a lot of people who feel like their gender identity, there would be an explanation for their gender identity if there was a physical explanation, and they really feel like it must be true. Um, so that does happen. Uh, some people also who really do have an intersex condition will have stories that are inaccurate or improbable due to lies and confusion that they were told. Um, and consultation with an experienced specialist is probably necessary to tell the difference. Um, okay, last story. Did I just get my five minute warning? Okay, be fast. My last story, um, I'm calling this pair Kadiatu and Malik. Um, Kadiatu is a West African woman who had a child that she named Malik, with, who was born with an intersex condition while in the US on a work permit. She was on a work permit. Um, when she returned to her home country, she hid the child's atypical genitals from everyone in her family for over a year. Um, finally, a family member discovered <coughs> that the child had ambiguous genitals, and her family turned against her. She was accused of witchcraft, um, and her life and the life of her child were in danger, so she fled back to the U.S. and applied for asylum. Um, and this was a tricky case because the child was already a U.S. citizen. He was born here. Um, and so, uh, as most of you probably know there's no derivative asylum for a parent. Um, however, we were able to um, to get asylum for this woman. It was a tricky case. We were really lucky that a big firm in New York, White and Case, took it on and they were able to pour a lot of resources into it. Um, and they did a great job of getting experts to testify about that part of the country and how children with birth anomalies and their mothers are sometimes treated in that part of the world. And it is very common to accuse a woman who has a child with a birth anomaly in her country of witchcraft, um, and therefore to attack her as a witch. It's also perceived as a stigma on the whole family. The entire family may become unmarriageable if word gets out that there was one child like this born in the family. Um, so we were able to get through, because we had a lot of resources, we were able to get the folks we need to tell the story about how things were in the, of the world. Although we didn't have specific information on the country conditions in her country. Um, so one of the take home points from that story is, you may have to cast a wider net. There is almost never specific information on country conditions, on intersex in that country. Um, so what we looked at was, we didn't just look at intersex, we looked at birth anomalies. We looked at people who are perceived to be gender variant. And we looked at the whole region rather than just looking at that one individual country. And we were able to gather enough to, to convince the judge of this story. Um, another point, a derivative claim may not be possible for a parent, um, but the parent herself, especially a mother, May, be in date, may have a well-founded fear of persecution as a result of having given birth to an intersex child. Um, that's a lot to think about that. Um, I want to close, I have two minutes, okay. I want to close with a quick pitch uh, that my organization, AIC, does accept legal interns. So <laughs> if there are young people here who are looking for your next internship, uh, feel free to contact me, I have some flyers. Um, and also just to let you know that we really do need your support to do this work. Um, so I, I passed out some newsletters with your information. If you got a hold of one of those, it tells a little more of Cariado's story um, and also information about how to get in touch with AIC if you're interested.